I welcome you to episode one of Novelist Spotlight, the podcast for aspiring novelists, for aspiring authors, and people who love to read. On this podcast, you will hear interviews with published fiction writers and gain their insights. In future episodes, I will do live interviews with authors, but I'll also do some episodes like this one where I'm going to be doing a little bit of channeling of the great novelist Tom Robbins, one of the most flamboyant writers in the business. I've looked back at the interviews he's done and uh, cobbled together Tom Robbins' advice for aspiring writers. And I'll share those with you because he has some excellent advice. If you've ever read any books authored by Tom Robbins, you know that, uh, as I say, he's one of the most flamboyant writers in the business. He's one of the hardest working writers in the business, and he's been successful for decades. And though I'm going to talk about his writing advice for novels, if you have never read his uh, memoir called Tibetan Peach Pie, it is excellent. It's outstanding. You want to hear about how an author became a novelist, what his beginnings were like, and how his writing and his career progressed over time. It is excellent, and it's told in all its um, psychedelic color that you would expect from Tom Robbins. So what's his advice for aspiring authors? Well, for starters, he says, stop worrying about getting published and concentrate on getting better. Because if you create a good or great book, it will get published. It's great advice. Concentrate on getting better, not on necessarily getting published. But I will say, even as Tom says this, it's never been tougher to get published the traditional way. Because there are so many books out there, partly because it's never been easier or less expensive to self-publish. So we always have that option of self-publishing, but for most of us, we think in terms of there's just no substitute for the traditional way of getting published where an agent falls in love with something you've sent to them and they convince an editor to fall in love with it. And then that editor takes it to the team of editors at the publishing house, makes the case for your novel, and then they say, we'd like to put you under contract and pay you to write just like Tom Robbins did it. Tougher than ever to do it that way, but that's okay. Now, writers also make the mistake of choosing a topic or genre that they think will sell rather than doing the kind of writing and tackling the kind of subject matter that really inspires them. Now, this is my own thoughts on the matter. I mean, take Tom Robbins as an example of why we shouldn't do that. His first novel, which is titled Another Roadside Attraction, was the farthest thing from what one would consider a saleable story idea. I mean, people seal the body of Jesus Christ from the catacombs under the Vatican. You can imagine how that story idea would fall flat with most agents or editors. And yet that book became a cult classic and sold over the decades, it sold more than 1 million copies. I read it many years ago. It was one of the most influential books I've ever read. If you haven't read it, check it out. Again, the title is Another Roadside Attraction. Now, Tom Robbins' second bit of advice is to challenge every sentence that you write. Challenge it for accuracy. Challenge it for clarity. Challenge it for imagination. I'll say again, Tom Robbins is one of the most imaginative writers in the business. That is for sure. And so often people state things in such plain terms when a little bit of imagination or flamboyance would have really elevated that sentence and then subsequent sentences and then the overall story. Now, he also says to challenge each sentence for cadence because people read with their ears as well as their eyes. Good writing has a rhythm just like good music has a rhythm. And Tom Robbins writes a single draft of each of his books. And he does so because he revises as he goes sentence by sentence on that sentence by sentence basis, putting it through the crucible 
of those challenges that um, I just listed off for you. Also, if you're not already in love with the language, Tom Robbins says, take the English language on a date and see if you can get some chemistry going with it. But I would say that if you're not in love with the language, you probably shouldn't be looking to be a writer. You know, as he says, every aspiring writer thinks he or she has a good story to tell, but a good story is not the same thing as a good story well told. And well told stories depend on the use of words, the strategic, the sensitive use of words. Now, this reminds me of a, the somewhat famous quotation, execution is a chariot of genius. You know, people think, and I used to think that it was superior to be an idea person. A person who had great ideas was the most valuable thing out there. But the truth of the matter is, lots of people have good ideas. What is sorely lacking in humanity are people who can actually execute on those ideas. Because it takes organizational skills. It takes planning. It takes stick to A lot of people just don't have the ability to stick with something. And certainly, if you're going to write a novel, anybody who's ever tried to write a novel or has written a novel knows that it takes tremendous stick to You're in it for the long haul. It can be a very onerous task. And it can be a lonely profession. In fact, Tom Robbins says that, you know, a writer needs to spend a lot of time alone. That's what writers do. It's a lot of time alone in a room and that you need to embrace solitude. You need to be the kind of person who appreciates solitude, who is comfortable with your own company. It's also a lot of work. You know, Tom Robbins says that he goes into his writing room. He has a writing room where he just, you know, a room in his house. He goes to every day and at 10 a.m., 10 o'clock in the morning, this is when he's working on a novel, which is probably most of the time. And uh, he says his muse always knows where to find him. He said, she doesn't have to go looking for me in the bars or on the beach or on the boulevards. 10 o'clock, she knows where I'll be. And she doesn't always show up because she's a muse and muses are fickle. He says, people who are waiting for inspiration to strike before they're right, they're, they're the amateurs and the dilettantes. If you're a professional writer, you pack your lunch and you go to work every day, just like a construction worker, just like an accountant. Tom Robbins says that there were several people in college who were just as talented with the English language as he was. And yet they never did anything with it because they didn't have the drive. They got married too young and then they got saddled with a mortgage. And they took on, and I'm using his phrase here because I, I think it's such a good one, took on such a big load of bananas that they could barely walk. And so what happened to their talent? Their talent never got utilized. It never got developed. It never materialized in the form of a book. They didn't have time for that. And they didn't have the drive for it. Another interesting tidbit from Tom Robbins is he says he doesn't keep a journal. He doesn't take a journal where he, when an idea comes floating into his head, say over dinner with a friend, he doesn't take time to scribble that down. He doesn't do that sort of thing. He does the writing in the room at the time during those hours, 10 a.m. in the morning until I, I believe he said 6 p.m. It's a long day. It's a full day. And that's where he does his writing, uh, never mind the journaling. It's that time in the room, concentrating, writing, rewriting sentence by sentence, and then allowing himself, I think, just to have a clear head and live his life without having to stay connected to that thought process. He's got his time for that, and then he's free from that. And I think it was Ernest Hemingway who also thought along those lines where he had his writing time, and when he walked away, when he was done with that, he didn't want to think about it anymore. He wanted that to be restricted time. So there you have a bit of advice from Tom Robbins. 
author of Another Roadside Attraction, Jitterbug Perfume, even Cowgirls Get the Blues. Although I have to say my favorite novel of his is Half Asleep in Frog Pajamas. It is incredibly funny and colorful, just as you would expect from Tom Robbins, but I think he hit his, his apotheosis with that particular novel. If you haven't read any of his stuff, uh, get out there and start sampling it. His stuff isn't for everybody, but it's for a lot of people. And he's got great writing advice. And um, let's face it, he tells people what they need to hear. It's hard work. You need to sit down every day and put the time in. Otherwise, the talent doesn't develop. The novel never gets completed. Again, this is Mike Consul, your host, and that is episode number one. I hope that you'll subscribe to this podcast because there's going to be a lot of good stuff ahead, both interviews with live, live interviews with novelists, as well as times when I'm going to channel novelists who aren't necessarily here. I want to have Tom Robbins as a guest live. I will uh, make, I will make that outreach in the future, but, uh, but for this episode, I have channeled some of his thinking and insights. Lots of good stuff ahead. I hope you'll subscribe to this podcast. And if you go to Amazon.com and search the name Mike Consul, you will be doing me an inestimable favor if when the novel Hardwood pops up, you buy a copy and check it out or give it to a friend. Thank you for listening.